Well, it's um, half past six in the afternoon. Uh, I'm here at Grenfell Park. There we go. And uh, I'm in my pyjama top because I didn't have any t-shirts uh, free. So yeah, I'm going in. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I really should have remembered to bring sunglasses. Anyway, um, hello everyone, I'm Caitlin Penny and uh, I would like to, to welcome you uh, to a brand new YouTube series. Uh, this one is a, a slightly unusual one compared to the ones I've done before. Um, those of you who know me in real life know that I have a, a big uh, fascination with, with animals and with nature and um, evolution and all things, all things natural. Uh, and as a result, I wanted to kind of get out more and see see more of uh, the uh, the UK's natural landscape I suppose um, see more of their wildlife and just kind of get out of the house more and uh, just have a more interesting life I suppose this is very much a kind of pilot introduction episode not really anything special I'm not on the hunt for tigers or anything um, uh, just just to kind of get the feel of how I'm gonna gonna do this and uh, get used to doing it I suppose and get get used to being in front of a camera as well because um, I haven't done anything in real life um, like vlogging or anything and whenever I have done in the past it's always been with me on the other side of the camera where you can't see me um, there's a good reason behind that I'm not the prettiest girl you'll, you'll ever know but um, yeah I don't know I just want to get a feel for um, for doing it this way that is what we scientifically call scat. A lot of flies around it. Uh, that's probably probably dog poo, something like that. Lovely, yeah. You see, uh, there, there's a shoe print in it too, so someone stepped in it. Not me, not me. In fact, there's a more sort of personal reason why I want to do this series. Um, last year was a very dark year in my life. I was very much uh, just staying at home, not doing anything at all. Um, reminding me very much of another period in my life which I had three years prior where exactly the same thing happened and um, yeah it, it takes it takes a lot of, out of you just being you know at home all the time not having the motivation to, to do anything um, and of course with the COVID-19 lockdown I found someone's someone's purse down there not sure if you can see it um, yeah, due to the, the COVID-19 lockdown, I've been forced very much back into that, that place, um, which I'd only just got out of. And uh, yeah, it's it's demoralizing. So I decided I couldn't keep living that way. And um, I'm going to go off on my own more and see what there is to find. And that's where the series comes in, because uh, I know that if I left it up to myself to to go out and see more places um i wouldn't be able to do it uh, i have to have kind of a i don't know i have to have kind of a reason i have to feel like i'm doing it for other people i've just seen a big insect through here oh it's a bird that's why it was such a big insect uh sorry yeah just a just a blackbird or something going past yep load of blackbirds um yeah so as as i was saying uh, that's that's why I'm doing this series um, to basically give myself the the motivation to go out and find more animals. And I'm not expecting it to be a brilliant, you know, documentary style thing. It's, I'm not going to be the next David Attenborough or whatever. In fact, this series is almost designed not to be good. I want to do minimal editing. I want to do minimal um, minimal computer work minimal effects, things like that. I don't want to do any voiceovers, or at least not when I can avoid doing it. Um, yeah, and that's that's mainly just because I want this to be for, for myself. You know, I don't want to have to spend time editing it, compiling it, planning it. I just want to get out, see what I can find, find an animal, shove it in front of a camera. Fuzzy little blackbird up in the tree. Now right now this ground is quite steep. I'm not sure if you can quite see how steep it is uh, from this footage. 
uh, but I'm a little bit worried about my footing. Uh, but the reason I'm down here and not on the path um, is because I have seen some rather interesting beetles and things uh, around this area before, and I know I'm going to get have a much better chance of that if I'm looking around logs and um, and stumps and things like that rather than you know concrete. All right, here's something I despise: littering. There's a can of Stella Artois. Uh, you've got a Capri Sun. Why do people do this? The path's there and surely there's a bin not too far from here. What's that? There's like a, a piece of clothing or something. Also a snail shell there too. You can see um, just on the edge you've got a piece of a, a snail shell. Or what used to be. Whoops! Oh, oh god! My, my shoe! Look at that! Like that's... let me see if I can... Oh my word! That's what happened just then. I kind of lost my footing and my shoe like scraped underneath my foot. Yeah, that's that's the difficulty of being on a um, on a bank. And I haven't really got ideal footwear for this either, so gotta be careful. Now up here you can probably just see some tiny little specks flying around. There are actually loads of them, uh, but I presume not all of them are coming out on camera. There you see, just specks flying around like that. Um, these are actually hoverflies, um, very, very common species. You've probably seen them a lot and everywhere. Um, you may have mistaken them for wasps. I know a lot of my friends um, often mistake them for wasps when they see them, see them in college or, or something. And you'd be forgiven for thinking about that because um, if you see one up close, um, they're, you know, they're black and white, they're the shape of a wasp, they look like they have a stinger. Uh, but these bugs actually don't sting at all. In fact, uh, wasps would probably eat these if given the, uh, if given the chance. Um, so really, you have nothing to, to worry about. A lot of, um, a lot of interesting spider webs around here. Now I have seen things like, uh, like, like little, almost like little orb weaver spiders before. Not like the kind you see in Australia, of course, but um, yeah, it would be nice to find uh, one of those to, to get it in front of the camera and um, see if I can work out later what what, um, what they actually are. Another thing I really want to find is squirrels, because, oh, another spider's web. Um, yeah, there are a lot of squirrels around here, grey squirrels specifically, and um, I'd be surprised if I didn't see one today. They, um, they tend to be everywhere around here. There's another little hoverfly, just kind of hovering, as you do. And here you see the wild Big Mac in its natural habitat. Now, this is exactly the kind of tucked away corner I'd expect a lot of things to be hiding. You've got a lot of cobwebs down there, but I'm not sure that I can actually uh, get around there to see anything else. I'm sure this is exactly the kind of quality content you all signed up for. Um, me finding orange littering trees. Wild. <laughs> At some point, I want to do an episode on uh, how some birds have adapted to urbanised areas. Clearly you can see good examples of this here, but uh, yeah, I'd love to make a more in-depth feature about it. Okay, I found uh, evidence of life, obviously some humans being around this area, um, but this is good because this is a nice um, accessible area uh, where there might be things like um, like spiders and wood lice and stuff um, in and amongst these logs. Uh, it's kind of hard. Um, oh yeah, definitely a wood lice down there. Let me see if I can get it out without getting a handful of litter. Oh, oh my word, there's a, a ladybird on my, on my arm. I found an animal. Uh, sadly, I'm not sure if I've got enough light to show you this properly. Let me let me stand up and see if I can move it to a um, a clearer area with a uh, with a bit more light. Um, oh, now it's going on the opposite side of my hand. Typical. Right. So, oh, and, and I can't focus. Come on, focus. 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 Oh, and it's gone. Well, that's. Uh, the first animal that I've managed to properly catch on camera. Um, wasn't very good, but uh, oh well. Um, a lot of people don't know that um, ladybirds are actually predators themselves. Uh, they spend all of their time eating, um, basically eating anything they can find. Uh, usually small aphids, but they'll also settle um, for if they can catch um, 
uh, the, the lava of hoverflies or uh, things like that, um, and also some microscopic organisms as well. Um, but yeah, surprisingly, surprisingly accurate hunters as well. They have a um, very high success rate. Now, one of the reasons I'm not finding much is because this isn't really a natural area. It looks like it is, um, but it's very much cut off from the uh, the rest of uh, UK uh, woodland, and uh, oh, and that is of course because it is just a park. And in future episodes, I hope to go more deeply into into to real woodlands that aren't so littered and covered in people. <laughs> Um, got a few things, uh, got a few things planned, uh, definitely. Um, nothing confirmed yet, of course. Um, it all depends on where my mum's uh, willing to drive me to and uh, how quickly I get a car of my own as we wade through the undergrowth. Um, but, uh, but yeah, definitely things are uh, are being planned, and I think I know roughly what I can and can't do. Still no squirrels. That's interesting. Um, one of the main problems in UK, whoops, in UK wildlife, is population fragmentation. It's, um, basically because the UK is so urbanised, if you look at a map of it, you'll see nothing but, um, towns and villages and cities. It really means that uh, woodland is, uh, few and far between. And, oh, God, as I've been tagged by a bramble. Um, yeah, and it also means... Um, that uh, populations of animals are being split apart by things like roads and uh, as a result you end up with less genetic variation uh, in those groups uh, which is of course never a, uh, a good thing um, but yeah there are still there are still episodes or sorry areas of uh, almost pristine uh, woodland and uh, natural beauty in uh, in the UK and uh, this is, uh, oh, found a bottle. Uh, this is certainly not one of them. <laughs> now, I know I mainly specialise in uh, animals, and I'm pretty sure that everyone knows this information, but again, uh, this is very much just a practice episode. As you can see here, these are known as um, helicopters, and uh, basically, um, you see this very aerodynamic shape of the leaves is uh, designed to, um, to basically carry them uh, in awkward directions, scatter them by the wind, and uh, yeah, you can see, oh, good example of that, uh, the awkward pattern in which it falls. I also have through here um, one of these, now the name escapes me, but you can see they have little uh, barbed hooks. This one's quite soft, uh, you do get much harder ones which are more successful, um, but you get these little barbed hooks that um, I used to refer to as gold dust for some reason back when I was in the primary school. There are loads of them around here, and um, they will basically uh, hook on um, to a passing animal, to, to things like clothing um, or to fur or something like that. And uh, they will be transported a, um, around. Let me see, actually, are there any already on my, on my trousers? I don't think there are, but uh, yeah, sometimes you'll be walking through a woodland or something and you'll get absolutely covered in the things. And you're doing exactly what the plant wants it to do, um, to give a plant a very, um, a very personalised... Uh, whatever, I'm thinking of the word personification, but uh, anyway, um, to personify a plant, that's what I mean to, um, uh, to say. Um, but yeah, that's exactly what, uh, what they want, because it helps them to, uh, to scatter their seeds. So, my main goal for this series, of course, is to, uh, to just get myself out of the house more, get myself um, to visit new places and things. Um, but I also would really, really love to find something extremely rare, or extremely interesting, or... Um, you know, just something bizarre that no one would expect me to um, to, to find. Um, I have got one of those planned, which I'm pretty much guaranteed to to find. Um, but I mean something like truly, truly exceptional, like you know, <laughs> almost like I mean, I'm using this as an example. I, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but like if I stumbled across the Loch Ness monster or something like that. Um, but yeah, uh, of course, the chances of something of that level happening quite slim i'm gonna give it my best shot nonetheless because uh i feel in an in an adventurous mood and yeah all i'm technically doing right now is walking through a park oh that was a stone falling 
<laughs> Sorry, it sounded like a squirrel or something is running towards me. Um, <clears throat> yeah, all I'm doing right now is walking through a, walking through a park. But yeah, I've got uh, bigger and more exciting things uh, things planned. I see this hollowed out tree stump here. Um, if this wasn't such a populated area, I'd be looking for things like stag beetle larvae in here. Um, but because there's so many people around, I don't think there um, there will be. Although I have seen, there's like a worm or something connected to the side there. Let me just, oh, it's a slug. Yeah, tiny, tiny little slug. There, there you see it on the, on the end of my stick. Um, I'll just cover it back up again because obviously it was shielding itself uh, from the from the sun in all of that dirt and uh, so it should because uh, slugs dry out in the sun. Um, yeah again I know you're not a particularly interesting animal but uh, as I said before this is my practice episode. I'm not exactly looking for the beast of Bob Moore out here am I? I'm uh, yeah I see something interesting. It's like a little rabbit hole or something. Probably hasn't been used in a while. And actually, as I get closer to it, I don't think it ever was a rabbit hole in the first place. Uh, that looks to me... Yeah, that looks to me as if basically what's happened is um, the wind has blown more dirt, and gravity of course, has blown more dirt onto the opposite side than this side, and it's created that kind of hollowed out area. I don't think that ever was a rabbit hole, um, even if it was. I don't think I've ever seen a rabbit in this area. So, yeah, I think it's unlikely. Um, I, I've literally only just noticed the, um, oh my word, look how much stuff I've got in my hair. That shows you just how easily the, um, the seeds could kind of attach themselves to, to something furry or with a lot of hair like me. Um, yeah. Um, anyway, I'm not sure where all the squirrels are because um, you normally see hundreds of them around here, but uh, yeah, I haven't seen any any squirrels today, let alone um, caught them on camera. Um, but yeah, I think that'll just about do it. I know I didn't catch anything truly interesting on camera today, but um, I wasn't really expecting to. It's not the right area for that. Um, but yeah, in the future I'm planning to go to, to more, better, um, more interesting places and uh, hopefully catch some more interesting things. So um, if you want to see more, more content like that, then uh, be sure to, to subscribe and uh, wait for the next episode. I can't tell you when it's going to be or how exciting it's going to be. Of course, um, all of this is still very much unconfirmed. Um, but yeah, this was just my kind of practice episode. It was more for me than for other people, so I understand that it wasn't particularly exciting. Um, wasn't really for me either, but it was relaxing, if nothing else. Um, but anyway, yeah, um, thank you all for, uh, for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!